So Sunday night, the Lord woke me up at 3.30, and as soon as I woke up, I was wide awake, and he, he said Ruth's name. So I just started praying in the spirit, and he just started to speak, and then I got a dream. So I'm going to share exactly, I had to write it down, because I have to share exactly what he said. So I started singing a song over and over. Order my steps in the Lord, my order the steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every way. Send your, it says anointing, send your glory, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. And so after I was praying in the spirit, I just kept singing that song. Just that part of the song, over and over and over. And then I heard, um, tear down traditions of men. And he showed me really the state of the church. And he led me to Mark 7, 1 through 9, which talks about the Pharisees were getting upset because the disciples weren't washing their hands properly. They weren't following the traditions that they had in there. And so after they were you know, asking Jesus, well, why are you letting them not wash their hands? Why are they not following these traditions? I'm paraphrasing here. He said, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, their teachings are merely human rules. So he said, you have to let go of the commands of God, You're, as he said, you let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. And this is what the message version says of that. He said, Isaiah was right about frauds like you. Hit the bullseye, in fact. These people make a big show of saying the right thing, but their heart isn't in it. They act like they are worshiping me, but they don't mean it. They just use me as a cover for teaching whatever suits their fancy, ditching God's command and taking up the latest fads. That's the church. He said, he went on, well, good for you. You get rid of God's command so you won't be inconvenienced in following religious fashions. So God said to you, Ruth, he's sending you to places to tear down the traditions of men. He said, they're, they think they're doing the right thing. They have all these programs, all these things going on in their church, but God's not in it. They got all these traditions, and he said, I'm going to use you to go to major churches who have all of God, a man's traditions. And he said, they, they think it's the spirit of God, but it's not. But you're going to bring the glory of God that's going to tear down the traditions of men. Then he said, you're going to open their eyes and remove the deception. He said, when you're there, don't get caught up in making friends. You're not there to make friends. His exact words were, don't get caught up in socializing and whining and dining with them. Mm -hmm. He said, because the talk will be about boasting and telling of great things they are doing. And he said, he reminded me of Acts, he said, I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus. I know Paul, but who are you? So we have all these mega churches that are doing the things, saying the right things out of their lips, but their heart is not in it. Believing that this is the spirit of God, but God is absent. And so he's going to use you to start tearing down those traditions of men. Um, they think, okay, I already said that, okay. He said, Ruth, stay pure in your heart and be set apart for me, says the Lord. You are not there to make friends or be popular. Trust me, I will give you the right words to say. And then he took me to 1 Corinthians 14. He said, this is how my church was supposed to be established. And it says, what then is right course, believers? When you meet together, each one has a psalm a teaching, a revelation, disclosure of special knowledge, a tongue or interpretation. Let everything be constructive and edifying and done for the good of the church. And then it talks about if 
somebody speaks in tongues, how many people should, you know, somebody should interpret, and it goes on like that. He goes, that's how I established my flow of my spirit as we get together as believers, but the church has put all these traditions in and have gone away, so therefore my spirit can't flow. They can't flow in my spirit, although they claim that it is me, but it's not. It is not me. It is the traditions of men. So then I fell asleep after I heard this. I'm like, oh, I don't know how I fell asleep. But then he gave me a dream while I was sleeping. And the dream was I saw this girl that goes to my church, actually, and she runs a children's ministry. And some of the kids were putting on a performance. And the kids behind the drums started to argue amongst each other. Some kids came out of the audience to go pick up various different guitars. And they took the guitars and they, put them, they went back to their seat, but they never played them. And so there was a lady that was, uh, I don't recognize her, you know, anybody I know. She started speaking to me directly and she said, you're the leader. Why are you allowing this chaos to happen? And I said, well, this girl over here, Trish has it. She's getting them in order. You know, and then she kept saying, well, you're the leader and you're out of order. And I saw myself raise my hands and smile, like acknowledging I am the leader. I am the leader. You're right. But she's taking care of it. She's, she's taking care of the kids over here and everything's coming into order. And then um, she kept getting upset. And the last words I heard were, you are like King Herod. And so when I woke up, I'm like, King Herod? It didn't come to my mind. I said, well, Lord, who's King Herod? And what do you want me to know from that? So then he took, take, takes me to Acts 12, 18 through 24. And King Herod was getting upset because Peter just got released from prison. And so he was telling his men to go interrogate the guards. Go and command them. Uh, that they were gonna, he was going to execute the guards for allowing Peter to get out of prison. And he's, he was very ex extremely angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. And so then the king went to his chamberlain and they asked for peace because their country was fed by the king's country because he was mad at these cities. And so they had to come back to him and try to make peace because... The King Herod was the one feeding them. So it says, On the appointed day, Herod dressed himself in his royal robes, sat on his throne, and began delivering a speech to the people. The assembled people kept shouting, It is the voice of God and not of man. And at once an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory and instead permitted himself to be worshipped. And he was eaten by worms and died five days later. Right after that it says, But the word of the Lord, the good news about salvation through Christ, continued to grow and spread increasingly in effectiveness. So once God removed him, now God could come into the church. And he's saying, We have a lot of King Herods in our church. And if they don't start removing these traditions of man, God's going to start removing them so he can come in, so his spirit can flow. Because right now it's being blocked. It's being blocked about all these traditions we have, how many songs we sing, what order of the service, all these things that we have established in the church that are preventing God's spirit Hallelujah. from flowing. Hallelujah. And he said, I'm going to start, if they don't get it right, I have to take them out because my spirit is being blocked. I cannot flow. So he comes back and says, you're going to start tearing down the traditions of men. So the glory of God, God's glory can come in and fill the temple. He wants it to fill the temple. His robe fills the, te the sanctuary. He wants all of him and none of us. He said, I want to fill the temple. I want to fill the sanctuary in my church. Right. Hallelujah. Right. It was a tough message, but he wanted me to deliver it in the way I saw it.
because he's saying change is coming and it's going to come rapidly and we're going to see these big ministries that aren't doing what God is telling them to do fall down and he said we got to start praying that the traditions of men get destroyed in every single one of God's churches so he can fill the temple with his glory praise me now, what she's saying is returning to the early church. Amen. Like, for instance, you see it's happened here this morning. We allowed this brother to come up from Minnesota. North Dakota. North Dakota. North Dakota. North Dakota. North Dakota. And then, just when I looked at you, I said, Margo. you know, I felt to ask you who you yeah. were. And see, you had the word of the mm -hmm. Lord in your mouth. The timing was perfect. And the Bible says, when we come together, let everyone that has a psalm, a prophecy, an ex exhortation, Amen. Amen. has a revelation. This is in the book of Corinthians, I think. So we'll know what God is doing in the church. We yes. have come to hear from God. We've come to hear about what, what you've been standing there singing about. You've, you've come to hear from the Lord. So most people will sing their songs. <laughs> And they'll quickly take an offering. They don't wait for God to say anything. They don't wait for any prophecy. And I've been trying to teach some of the people here. I've talked to several of our music leaders in this church. I gave one of Ruth's book on the glory realm, her first book. I said, read this. It's old, but it's got all the keys in it that you'll need to let the glory move in this church. And he, But then I realized he couldn't read English very well. He's Spanish. So I'm hoping his wife will read it because she's got a voice like an angel. She really does. So that's what we do. That's why we sing and sometimes we talk and I'll tell Richard to play because it's a filler that's needed there. See, I'm looking for a filler. That's why I tell you if I start coughing, you start praising God. Because I have a little problem, but you just start praising God. You cover it with your praise. Okay? How many going to do that? Okay, I'll give you a minute, just a minute. Okay. You do that, but see, we let these people have come with the word. Well, I wouldn't want to miss that word. And the Lord did speak to me in the traditions of man. I didn't know fully what he meant that you told all that. Let the spirit move. Let it move its course. The Bible says in this generation that he's going to speak to this generation by the water courses, by the willow tree. And I didn't understand what that meant. These are water courses when we move and we sing in the spirit, we give prophecies, or, we, or I feel or I see. You know, I'll, I'll tell Jerry, you got something, his wife, let's speak it out. Because it tells us we're just not here to feel the beat of the music. That's right. But we're to get the flow of the song. What is he doing in that moment? And then you'll know why you came today. Somebody came from, oh, I'm going, I'm coming here Sunday morning. And the Lord said, no, you go to this church. I'm right at it when he said, turn off. And believe it or not, about 30 people came up to me for me to talk to them. I wasn't there to preach. But he was preaching on something God wants me to do. You understand? He had the key to it. And I need more information, a revelation of what to do. The church, honey, is not just to come and warm a seat and hear a word and get a little oil poured on you, honey. It's to make you the disciple, the apostle God wants in the world. Anybody know that? Yeah. Do, you, do you have children in the family back at home? They have one daughter and two grandchildren. So they're old enough to take care of themselves. Yeah. But, I mean, just people don't do that. they got to get hands laid on them and an order from the board. And the, Is it all right with the pastor? By that time, God's passed on and gone somewhere else. That's right. And you don't have the revelation that you need to do what he's called you. It doesn't mean you're not out of order. I'm not saying that. But there are people. There's an inner circle and an outer circle that God has made them hungry for something more, and they know it. Yeah. And you just let God just say, Pastor, God's telling me to go over here. Run, just tell him you're going. You understand? Don't be a child out there away from home and the parents don't know what's happening. But you don't stop at their stop signs. Come on. The word is go to me. Yes. When I was on, before I came here, God gave me words. So, um, I was. I came home one day. He already gave me a whole new um, uh, career within the last time I've been here. That's why I've been busy. But one day I was at work, and I, all I do is help people. He pays me to do what I already do. Um, I came home, 
and on the right hand side of my bed, and I just got done beautifying my room, getting little things that God told me to get. He said, get this candlesticks and get this oil and get all this stuff set up in the room. And I did that. So I came home one day, and on the right hand side of my bed, there was cards. And I don't know who this is for. It was Christmas cards, but there were angels on the front. And they were red like this shirt. All of the cards are still by the side of my bed. But there were eight. So I don't know who that's for, but it was eight angels. And it was on red cards. They were Christmas cards. I don't know who that's for. Also, I have a word for, for the church is baskets of anointing oil. Wow. God is about to release baskets of anointing oil. Last thing, confirmation. Everything that was flowing from this church this day was all accurate because that thing that she said, the, the uh, verses that she was saying, that's from a song. And I've been playing that song all week long. God just kept having me play it. It's a gospel song. Order my steps in the Lord. i just been playing it and playing it and playing it. So God is confirming that he wants to take over. And also one thing he gave me last night is that there she's 100% correct. God, he has fired some people. There's some pastors that have been preaching, and just because he let them keep their job does not mean that they're still flowing in the anointing. Just like Saul, he gave me this word. It was 14 minutes right before I went to sleep. I turned on, I did exactly what he said, and the thing popped up. The enemy tried to stop me from seeing it, but I did it again, and it popped up. And, and, and a prophet was saying that some of these people who look like they have a whole big following, a big church, they're preaching, but God already fired them. Just like Saul, Saul was still in power, but he already was fired. God's spirit departed from him. So we need to learn how to flow like Sister Ruth is telling us in God's spirit because God can go over here and we still over here doing this. And God is like, I'm already over here. The last thing that, that he gave me was uh, confirming is we, uh, weekend celebrations to where there's no restriction. To, I, I got that it was uh, de deliverance in this corner. Uh, praise and worship in this corner, uh, something going on over there, something going on over here. Music is, uh, he said, music is is the most, is, is very potent, but he wanted from true worshipers. Yeah. He don't want the fake, the fakers. Yeah. He wants us to praise him right. from our heart. And he also said that dance, that confirmation, what you said to me, or I think he was talking to me, he said that something to do with dance. And it's going to be very powerful. But he wants us to have weekend celebrations where there's no restriction and we can flow in the spirit exactly how he wants us to flow. So that's that's what he gave to us. It's a pattern. You know like the pattern in the tabernacle? They have a pattern, three different patterns and that lives within us. It's a pattern the way he wants it. Now he'll have a lot of little outreaches, little trip carries, little strings moving out from it. But you will see... The movement of God in your life every day. When you said, you, when did you have this dream about the angels and the Christmas cards? Oh, that wasn't a dream. That was real. And mm -hmm. I asked my pastor, how did they get, he said they must have fell out of the cupboard. But it was no way that these cards would have <laughs> fell out of the cabinet because the cabinet was closed. And it was right in a nice little stack on the side of my bed. This happened uh, two days ago. A day or two ago, and I just picked them up, and I was like, "Why do I?" Have Are they them? used Christmas cards? No, no, they're not used. They don't have nothing on them. You know, eight is in the number of new beginnings. Yeah, that's what my pastor said. Amen. You said there were eight angels. It could yeah, be eight exactly. months. It was eight cards. Yeah, it could and they be. all had angels on. They were all the same card. They were all the same cards. Nothing written in them. Nothing. Oh, they were just cards. alike. Oh, they they were all the same cards, but it was eight of them. And God I maybe uh, 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 the eight, eight, eight angels could be something in eight weeks, eight days, new beginnings. But it's very prophetic, and you seek the Lord and let him reveal it all to you because he gave it to you. But I receive what you said. I mean, I understand a lot what you're saying. And you want these visitations. You want, listen, you want God. 
I feel like I've missed something if he doesn't give me a dream every night. Mm -hmm. I really do. I feel like I didn't pray right. There's something wrong with my salvation here, my relationship. And I don't want to say anymore, but, you know, we praise God here. When you sit by the feet, bring a release. Now, feet is not worship. It's just moving your hands and your feet, bring a release. It's part of our instruments. But when true worship comes from the heart, it no longer sounds like you. It sounds like the other world. Yeah. It's the other world, the harmony, the unity, the beauty of it when it comes. You'll sound like angels and not like people when you sing. That's what happens. You'll get a voice that you didn't know you had. You didn't even have a voice before. Remember when they said, uh, when Jesus came, they, they wanted to know, you know, if, if he was the carpenter's son. They didn't believe it. But this glory is going to come and it's going to bring revelation. Glory brings revelation and the holiness of God. I want you to remember that. It's important that you all find out what holiness means. Um, it means you don't want to do things that displease God. Anything. I don't care what it is. The other night I was flipping my television. And I don't know where this channel came from, and I don't want to talk about it. I went, ah, what happened? And I closed my eyes trying to get it back, get it on another station somewhere. I don't know how I got into it. I didn't even know I had it on my TV. I don't pay for it. It was terrible. And I said, Lord, don't let me remember any of this. Don't let any of this come to my mind. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for pushing the wrong button. And you may not understand what that means, but I've seen the face of the Lord, and his, and his feet were like pearl. So I'm running in and out of valleys of people that were in the valley of decision. It was like they were in a furnace, and he had, a, he had an asbestos coat on where he was quickly snatching people out of the fire, out of hell. He was snatching them. And you want to have these visions of the movements of God, the ways of the living creatures, the governments of what God is doing in the earth. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing one more song for Israel. Then we're going to go home early today. I'm not going to stay here and talk with anybody. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alfreda. In prayer recently, at another prayer board, people, everybody, were, we were all praying in tongues. Excuse me, we were all praying in tongues. And I heard an Asian tongue. It sounded Asian. And I opened my eyes, and here stands a, a Chinese lady dressed in pink in the prayer room. And I didn't know what to think about that until I heard about the, the virus that's going on right now. She was listening for our prayers. I really believe she was listening for our prayers for China. Yes. And there are Asians here today, I see. I think we should pray for China. Yes, I was going to mention that because the lady came last week Remember the lady the week before came and she opened up to the spirit and began to walk up here speaking yes, in yes, Chinese? Yes, yes. She came up last week. She's yes. not here. I believe her name was Brenda. And she said, I believe we need to pray for China. When you all watch the news, you know what is happening. It's, it's a crisis, but God is dealing with China. But see, all of our connection is with China. Everything is made everywhere is connected with China. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes, Korea's right up underneath them over there. And can I just add Vietnam? Because the woman that I worked with with YWAM in 1990 has been in Vietnam for 30 years. She's in New Zealand. She's back there now, and there's been 16 cases of the virus in northern Vietnam. But, you know, it's a lot of it is fear. Yeah. But we do want to pray for every area yes. where this virus has gotten. Iran, I was on the phone with people in Iran, scared about the virus, and, you know, people have died. So, yeah, there are all these areas. Heavenly Father, you said the nations are a drop in the bucket. Lord, is there anything too hard for you? You're telling us. And God, you're gauging everything. Your eye is upon everything that is happening. Lord, you know how many people are there and how many people you're going to take. But God, we ask for your mercies. We ask for your blood one more time to cover the people. 
God, in every nation, God, we ask you to speak to the leaders, the dictators, those that are ahead. Lord, that policy shall be changed. There'd be new working in their government, God, that your spirit can come and flow in the nation. Lord, that salvation shall come, and many shall prepare themselves for your home and your place. God, that there shall be a new joy in the country and blessings and restoration and prosperity. Because you're a God that is not limited. Lord, you're not limited in what you can do. We thank you for visiting China and Korea. Lord, in Vietnam, Lord, all of these countries. God, we ask, you said angels ahead. Lord Jesus, you paved the way for your river to flow, for your word to come, for the heavens to be open, for joy to begin, Lord. God, there shall be a reason for living, a reason for standing. Lord, a reason for breathing. Lord, in the heart of every person, every nationality. God, we look to you for the answer. Lord, only you know how to get in and come out. Lord, there's no door that's closed to what you want to do. But God, we pray the hearts of the people shall be receptive. It shall be open for joy that's unspeakable. God, for the victory. Lord, for the new thing that you want to do in every nation, in every country. God, if their minds suddenly, their hearts suddenly will have a change for what is new like you're doing in India. There's no God before you or after you, Lord. We thank you that your throne and your footstool shall be set up in every country that we've spoken of today. We're going to ask for China now, Lord. We're going to join our hearts and believe that the news will suddenly change. Lord, there'll be a new declaration of your goodness great love that you have for people. I ask for China. I call her by name. Hallelujah. I need to go a little lower, Richard. I ask for China. You all know it. I call her by name. I present her to the Father in Jesus' name. I ask for China. I call her by name. I present her to the Father in Jesus' name. Lord, we include North and South Korea, Cambodia too, and may Hong Kong come along with you. We ask for the South Sea, Taiwan and all that shall be. As for the nations in Jesus' name, may they not be naked, may they not be ashamed to stand before you, O oh God, on that great judgment day. May they be spotless. Jesus that day at your throne I ask for the nations I call them by name I present them to the Father in Jesus name I I call them by name. I present them to the Father in Jesus' name. And most.
was in spare on that day saying, my pipe will just fell up into this. Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance. And thy children's forever because thou hast wholly followed the Lord thy God. This is Caleb saying this and the children of Israel unto Moses. He's 80 and 5 years old. You know, the Lord told me I was going to get my inheritance at 85. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. Some of you can drive a new speed limit. <laughs> Pastor Bain said you're not worth too much until you're 80. A lot of you should have hope right now. <laughs> I want to say someone told me that the oil had stopped flowing. Anybody know anything about that? What oil? That oil that, that, yeah, in the Bible. Yes, the Lord told me about it. Last week. Yeah, it's, it's just stopped flowing. Stop January 10th. Now listen, God does this many times. He'll have a miracle. He'll run a little while. I mean, I don't see him rolling back the Pacific Ocean like he did the Dead Sea. No. <laughs> but he can't do it. That was your way to get to Israel. Hallelujah. But they said that the gold that we had lasted about five years and it stopped flowing. And now this is the oil. It's just, listen, it's just that God is very passionate over these things that he develops to bless his people. And then he'll stop it and see if we'll seek him. We won't run there just for the oil. I will tell you this. I heard a praise in that church that I haven't heard since the day I was born. Wow. It was like the heavens had opened and God was dumping everything into the nations. It was such a sound it hurt my ears. God wants the floodgates to open that we can really know how to worship the Lord. I know that I'm here to encourage you, and you know that I tell you things over and over and push on you and push on you and pull on you and say things that I shouldn't say. But you, you get away. Wake in your spirit to what God wants. Listen, you people are at the age right now that you can have revival in any place that you go. You're at that age. When they see you coming, they'll see Samuel coming. Come on. He's coming with his fruits of oil. Remember, he said, God, you'll kill me if I go down there. He said, well, just take some oil and tell him you're coming, you know, for the sacrifice. Tell him you're coming with the sacrifice. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. We don't have much time, folks. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're not down on these people that you're all talking about. How many of you have ever been in a dead church? <laughs> <laughs> and I told him the story, brother. I was teaching my sister-in-law how to hear the voice of the Lord I'm in Oklahoma. I took her into this church, the Pentecostal church. And I, I kept telling her what to do. I said, da, 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 da. She said, I think I heard the voice of the Lord. I said, you did? I was surprised. I said, what did he say? She said, this church is dead, dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to explain to her what the church is dead. God, we bless Israel. We bless these precious people of yours. God, you thank you. And everybody's the same in your sight. We're all covered with the same blood. Hallelujah. The same spirit and the same God. Lord, I thank you for visitations, for illumination. God, I thank you, God. It'll be so real in the night. It's like thunder coming in the room. Lord Jesus, send your angels ahead to make the quite crooked stream. Lord, we all have something that limiting you, and we want to know what it is. Lord, let it be removed. Every limitation. Everything that will keep us from seeing and knowing. And wondering that every mystery open up to the revelation of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we love your word. We're living now in the testimony of Jesus' this prophetic age. The testimony, God, of who you are and what you're doing. And let us learn of you in a greater way than we've ever known you before. Let our delight be in everything that you do, no matter what. Is it correction? Is it a blessing? Is it a strong word? Let us delight ourselves in the Lord. You said you will show us what our desires are all about. As we gathered unto you in Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. 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 blessing of our president. Yes. I keep hearing uh, all of the set here. I kept hearing that we should ask right now as a group begin to press against this pandemic spirit and just contain that. Oh, yes. yes. They talk about it on the news. The panicky was so bad, I said, Lord, get him off the air. 
He just kept talking about who was saying what was all about this. Don't talk against it. Pence came on and he said, oh, we're believing something better. We're believing it's going to be in control. You know, let your faith Amen. work. Yeah. Or people will get distraught and take their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Like the 29, yeah. what happened in 1929, the Depression. Yeah. And like you said, and here's what we do when we, you know, pray for cities or when we sing about it, like we ask for nations, we're covering the whole world. It's not just the one we sing about. Yeah. Let your faith be broadened. Let it be enlarged. Yeah. God, we thank you. Trump is in your hands. Yes. Lord, he's speaking more spiritual. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That he's going to be a father to many nations. Yes. Father to many people. Hallelujah. Lord, you're the many-breasted one. And show him how to feed the nations, Lord. Show him, Lord, how to reach out with spiritual terms and spiritual thoughts, prophetic ways. Lord, keep those those hounds of heaven you got on him. Hallelujah. Lord, chasing him from one country. You had, you're having him to go to the right places at the right time. They're having revival in India right now. Big revival. And Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, that your cloak of mercy is upon him. Lord, his robe of righteousness, you have put it upon him. And Lord, he will think wisely when he speaks. Lord, that the truth will come and will make many people free. Hallelujah. God, that they will hear a sound they haven't heard before. Yes, the joy of a true master. Yes. The voice of a true man. Yes. Of a teacher. Yes. Lord Jesus, make him prophetic like he's never been before. Yes, yes, Show him how to yield to the anointing, to the spirit, to the ways of heaven. Hallelujah. God, let there be a new prayer life in his life. God, if his knee will bound up, it will bend every night. Lord, if he just calls on your name, and I thank you for it, God. I thank you that you've chosen this man. Protection, Lord, like a wall around him that nothing can penetrate it. God, he'll keep a good spirit through it all. He'll say the right things to everyone, Lord, what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Worship him right now. Worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful counselor. Praise you. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Your holy name. Thank you, Lord. There's no other name before us or behind us. Over or under us. But your precious name. Dear God, we stand upon it. We honor it. We honor it. We call upon it. Oh God, we put it before anything else in our lives. Jesus, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord. Anybody can go that would like to. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Counselor, mighty God, the breath and the bread to Bethlehem, the crown of Israel, the joy of the whole earth. Jesus, Jesus, Amen, 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 Amen,
just a little bit of flavor that is ready to flavor. That flavor. They say when you go to India, you gotta eat some curry. We'll go to Israel and we'll eat of God. Hallelujah. And President Trump made a wonderful alliance. You know, Sanders is talking about it putting the embassy back. Did you know that back in? Yes. The television. You know, he's going to tell the truth about himself. That's all I'm going to say for it's over with. Amen. We're telling the truth about God. Come on. But you, did you have a vision today, Sharon? Um, I just wanted to say that... Um, Come quickly. Okay. I just want to say... Oops. Um, I had a vision of uh, the Lord's hand, and he was turning the page, and on that page that he turned... Uh, it said Netanyahu. I don't know what that means, but it was beautiful. Well, turn the page. The prime Minister, how many know that? You see something like that. He's turning the page in his life. He's been hard-pressed. Thank you for Netanyahu, Lord. I thank you that you have right-standing men. You're putting an office all over the world in every nation. God, you're raising up a man everywhere. Come on. In our neighborhood, in our family. we got matriarchs and patriarchs right in this room. Lord, you made the head, not the tail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's just sing the head and the tail. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just feel a real fast Israeli sound. Okay. Hallelujah. You're made in the head. We're singing for that Anybody wants to go, you can go.
another invitation. I got two invitations today. I got one tomorrow morning. I got one Wednesday.